welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology in this video we'll be talking about cardiac output and what is cardiac output okay we've been talking about uh, the cardiac cycle and also we'll be talking about the different parts of the cardiac cardiovascular system so you can watch all of our videos there cardiac output is simply the volume of blood pumped by the heart per minute okay so we calculated in the amount of blood or the volume of blood in ml pumped per minute and that's how we calculate the cardiac output of a human body now this cardiac output is the function of heart rate and stroke volume these are the two things that compose that those are composing cardiac output okay the heart rate is simply the number of heart beats heart beats per second okay uh, actually if you calculating in minutes so number of heart beats per minute actually and the stroke volume is the volume of blood that is pumped out of the heart with each beat okay so this is another volume of the blood that is pumped for each beat so you multiply them together to get the value of cardiac output that's all about cardiac output so this is the amount or volume of blood that is pumped by the heart per minute calculated equals with heart rate that is the time the heart is beating per minute multiplied by the volume of blood it is pumping per each beat okay that's how we get the calculation of the cardiac output so let's look at here the goals for our learning is to recognize the cardiac output varies directly with the heart rate and the stroke volume we saw both of them and how they are linked to identify the factors that modify heart rate and stroke volume and also to know how this cardiac output is regulated and how those things change cardiac output over time now it depends that cardiac out output can be regulated in different way and for different person this and different situations as well the cardiac output may vary okay for different situations that means if you are exercising the cardiac output of your body will be different if you are relaxing and watching a movie the cardiac output may be different if you are sleeping the cardiac output may be different this is the page to tell you about the process again so it's called angiographic cardiac output or simply cardiac output equals to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate that's what we all know and the stroke volume and heart rate both are calculated in milliliters so divided by thousand milliliter we get the actual value that we want to find out what is stroke volume we talked it earlier about the stroke volume that is the amount of uh, like blood that is pumped uh, when each beat or each heart cycle is conducted so usually the calculation is made like stroke volume equals to end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume because you know heart beats in the two different stages systole and diastole diastole is the relaxing stage when the heart is filled with the blood and systole is the contraction phase of the heart or different compartments of the heart that will push the blood to the next compartment or to the uh, aortic uh, aorta or to, to the pulmonary uh, vein and all these regions okay so that's how we measure it so how we measure end diastolic volume that is the end of the blood that is left in the left ventricle during the diastole of the heart now in systolic volume we measure it the amount of blood that is present in the left ventricle after the systole that's what we can measure now what is systole diastole and what we are actually talking about what we mean by heart to beat and heart is beating beating is is the process of heart's different compartments to regularly relax and contract and the process of heart beating and the whole process of transferring blood from the one compartment of heart to the next and then transferring it to the rest of the body as well as to the lungs known as a cardiac cycle so i'll very much encourage you to know about cardiac cycle first before knowing cardiac output so you can watch a video on cardiac cycle in our channel which can help you to get the idea now once we know about that idea we can easily calculate the cardiac output 
we know the stroke volume we know the heart rate which can be easy to calculate multiply them divided with 1000 ml we get the value of the cardiac output now what we know is that the cardiac output is constituent of heart rate and stroke volume so to increase a cardiac output what things we can do is to increase the stroke volume or increase the heart rate or increase both if we increase only stroke volume or the heart rate that will leads to a simple increment of the cardiac output but we increase if we increase both that will leads to a huge amount of increment in the cardiac output now when we require to increase cardiac output when our body requires a lot of blood filled with nutrients and oxygen when we are running exercising we need that to increase it so our body have different regulatory process to increase the cardiac output as well as to decrease the cardiac output depending upon the need these are some factors that are controlling the cardiac output process that you can see here okay okay you see here in this case the regulation of cardiac output is this is the ultimate thing that we are regulating that's cardiac output and there are different nervous system and release of hormones that also regulate the process of cardiac output now in this picture plus means positive regulation minus means negative regulation okay that's what we know here so the key factor of regulating the cardiac output is either regulating the stroke volume or the heart beat okay so it's kind of the most of the body's processes are targeting the stroke volume to regulate the cardiac output this is what they are targeting okay so the key factor for regulating the stroke volume is the amount of stretching that occurs to the ventricular cardiac muscle prior to the ventricular contraction so more the cardiac muscle stretches the more forcefully it contracts right because the whole idea is contraction and relaxation so the more will stretch in the relaxation the more that will allow it to contract so that will allow to put more blood with a huge pressure there so this stronger contraction can increase the stroke volume of the blood inside the heart okay now normally each ventricle normally contains about 120 ml of blood by the end of the diastole so at the end of the systole about 50 ml of the blood are left at each of the ventricle that means 70 ml of the blood were pumped out from each ventricle during the systole so if we do a higher amount of stretching of the muscles that can give more contraction that can lead to release of more than 70 ml of blood that can release more and pump more than 70 ml of blood let's say 80 ml or 90 ml of blood are pumped so it will lead to only 30 ml remaining there so the stroke volume is increasing by 2 ml 20 ml there that's what the target of body to increase the stroke volume out there okay and another thing about the heart rate is that heart beat or heart rate that's the number of times heart beats per 1 minute it's only average is 75 times per minute now that thing can't be so much regulated but what we regulate is the movement of blood the volume of the blood that is pushed out or pumped out of the of the ventricles that's what we can regulate and and for regulating that we have sympathetic nervous system to play a vital role sympathetic nervous system provides a positive effect to increase both heart rate as well as stroke volume and those sympathetic nervous system factors will be released that will allow the the higher amount of contraction that will release to pump out more amount of blood and that will also increase the heart rate a little bit along with those two things it will increase uh, the cardiac output in high amount okay so you can do a simple experiment to check it simply if you put epinephrine as a hormone to the frog's heart that will also allow it Uh, to completely increase uh, the activity because epinephrine can also increase the sympathetic nervous system activity okay 
this is a hormone that can regulate that now on the other hand the parasympathetic part of the nervous system can prevent and can decrease the heart rate it, it allows our body to chill and to relax so it has a negative effect over there okay and another thing is the end diastolic volume that the amount of blood left there at the end of the diastole region we talked about it so if we increase that it will also give us a higher stroke volume there okay now this is uh, different stages and different parts what is regulating the process of cardiac output that is listed in this picture there are different things like increased sympathetic stimulation increased parasympathetic stimulation increased venous return slow heart rate and different things now in here we didn't, didn't talk about the venous return actually the cardiac muscle fibers are stretched by increased blood volume returning to the heart Increased stretch results in greater force for the contraction that will allow more blood to move. That's what we talked earlier here and that makes uh, the blood to flow. So the stroke volume gets increased as well as the cardiac output increased. Now sympathetic stimulation we also talk about. Increased in sympathetic stimulation that is due to fright or anger. It can also increase the heart rate as well as the uh, the, the volume of the blood that will be pumped okay another thing is exercise exercise activates sympathetic you know if you look at exercise it activates sympathetic nervous system activity or if you have low blood pressure that will also increase the sympathetic nervous system activity because if the blood pressure is lower than the normal then the body will try to restore the blood pressure and thus it will try to pump more blood so that the pressure can rise that can ultimately allow to increase the cardiac output okay exercise increases you know it, it increases the contractile force of the cardiac muscle so increase the stroke volume different hormones epinephrine thyroxine can also increase the stroke volume by that same fashion of increasing contraction of the cardiac muscle okay now both the higher heart rate and squeezing action of the skeletal muscle that is formed due to exercise increase the cardiac output in tremendous amount because as I told you earlier to increase cardiac amount or cardiac output we can either increase the stroke volume or increase the heart rate and both these things are increased during exercise heart rate is increased as well as due to the muscle contraction there and you know the muscle as a respiratory pumps we saw it earlier during the talk about uh, the cardiac uh, anatomy that there are muscles that are present which can squeeze uh, so these are the different muscular cells or mus muscles that that will squeeze and exert pressure on the nearby blood vessel that will allow the blood to move in a specific direction in huge force so both these things together can clear the blood and plump, pump the blood out very very fast that will lead to the generation of higher cardiac output in the time okay now that could be also related to rising blood pressure if the blood pressure reduces sympathetic activity it decreases the heart rate so if you have a high blood pressure it also increases the arterial pressure which when which mostly ventricle must overcome before stimulating the valves open so increasing this esv and decreasing the stroke volume that will ultimately lead to like cardiac output to slow down or cardiac output to be re to be reduced okay now another thing is sudden drop in the volume of the blood so inside your blood there is a sudden drop of the blood volume due to any severe blood loss that also results in low venous return and therefore decrease the stroke volume therefore uh, decreasing the cardiac output another important thing that regulates is the excess amount of calcium the excess calcium can lead to spastic heart contractions okay so as it contracts the heart an undesirable condition that's a spastic contraction that it's not natural now that calcium also increase the stroke volume by enhancing the contracticity or contractility of this different compartments and uh, contraction ability of the heart okay that will also allow huge amount of blood to rush and can cause the cardiac output to rise so these are the different types of 
regulatory measures or regulatory procedures to, to control the cardiac output. Now it depends on our body's physical condition and state that body decides to either increase the cardiac output or decrease the cardiac output to cope up with the situation to maintain healthy homeostasis of our body. So that's all about cardiac output. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this video with your friends. Thank you.